this is T from Driftwood Gaming and I'm back with another tutorial for Effect Seeker. We're going to do a series going through the documentation that's found on their website and we're now on page two. So let's cover what page two covers or hmm, chapter two? I don't know, whatever they call it. Anyways, let's do this. So I like to just be able to see the particle first, so I hit play and there's our nice little boxy particle. And the first thing that we're gonna learn to do with this box is change its position. So we don't have a position tab here, and this is perfect because then you'll see how to add a tab up here. You go to the window and find your position tab, open it, and you can throw it right up on this quick bar Super easy. So to get the options, you see there's nothing here. In order to get the options, we have to select the node that the particle lives in. So we're gonna set the position of this particle in the most basic way possible. Set position, and we're just gonna move it over a little bit. Let's put this at one. And you'll see the box moves over. That's how you set the position. Now, it doesn't really do too much though, just sitting there and blinking, it seems kind of kind of uh, boring and actually we are going to do a little bit more because we're going to change this to PVA. We are going to give this a speed so the box does something more than just blink in one spot. So in the X, the speed that I actually like to work with because my brain can handle it is 0 0.05. You see now the box is running away but if we change the Y it's going to run away in a different direction. Now it's going diagonal and then if we change the Z it's going to change direction yet again. So you can uh, set this to whatever you'd like in order to get the box or you know your particle to go in whatever direction that you'd like. Now we're going to find out more about these particles because you know one box is pretty boring isn't it? I want to see more than one box so we're going to go to this tab it's called the basic settings tab and you can change the spawn count here. We're going to actually click infinite whoa okay now you see all these boxes going in one direction it's kind of crazy if you wanted things going in one direction and you wanted to see the boxes uh, separately you need to change the spawn rate so we're gonna change the spawn rate to 5 oh that's a little better let's change it to 20 there we go now we can see the boxes uh, separately we know that they're actually boxes but we're gonna change this back Just showing you guys how to do that because we're gonna do something else if you go back to position You'll notice that on the bottom you have what's called a deviation. If we take this and we change the deviation to say one for each one, all of a sudden it's just like spraying all over the place. Gosh, it's a little intense. Let's change this to 0 0.05 as well. Or just 0 0.5, yeah, that'll work. That's a little better. Actually, I kinda wanna do 0 0.05. You can fiddle with the numbers any way you like to get it to what you want it to be. And there we go. Yeah, this is a little bit better. <laughs> so this is actually all there is for part two on the documentation. We uh, just learned how to make multiple particles, how to give them a speed and a direction, and how to deviate that. So now when it comes from the center, it's going to come out at a random direction based on the deviation that you gave it. And that's it. This is the documentation for Effect Seeker is actually really good, and I look forward to going through it with you guys. But anyways, if you like this tutorial, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Come back to see some more tutorials because they are coming, and I am super excited about this. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!